Okay, so this is something I expect all of you just shake it up, just like they go around like that, and then shake it up. Get energized, get some energy, get get your mind active, and then get started. Okay, so I will. There's some. I think some of you ask some question related to work done by internal forces. Let me just clarify. Let me let's spend a little time. What do we mean by internal forces? And what is the work done by internal forces? Is that always zero? Can it be non-zero and all? Okay. So net work done by internal forces. So first of all, when we talk about, see, there are a few things even before we understand. See, for force to act, minimum we need two particles. Without presence of two particles, force cannot act. Without presence of two particles, the force will not act. We are dealing with the two particles. And if uh, these two particles, either due to gravitational force or due to some other field force, without they can exert force on each other, either without in contact or within contact. When they come in contact, they exert contact forces. And when they're not in contact, still they can exert field forces. We understand that forces will be uh, equal and opposite. So for two objects, they can exert force on each other. They exist in pair. If I take these two objects together as a system, then force exerted on A by B and force exerted on B by A become internal. So internal forces depends on choice of system. When two objects taken together as a system, then only there is well, then then only they become internal forces. And let's take some example. And if there are two objects, when there is no relative displacement, what does no relative displacement mean? If during a time interval, B has certain displacement, and whatever displacement B has, A also has same displacement, which means same direction and same magnitude. If the displacements are identical, in that case, net work done by internal forces are zero. Let's understand why so. If displacements are equal, but forces are opposite. So one force, if one force is F1, other force, of course, is minus F1. So what will happen if displacements are same, since forces are opposite to each other, internal forces, their forces, work done will come to zero. So that is something, so internal forces, when is the work done zero? When there's no relative displacement. Let's understand in terms of what kind of example you may come at. Let's think of a case, uh, see, even friction force, when you talk, I'll take two types of internal forces. One is conservative, one is non-conservative. So let me take friction force, which also is internal force. Let's say this is a smooth surface here. And uh, uh, these are two objects here, A and B. And let's see the coefficient of friction, of friction between the two of them is 0.2. Now, if B is uh, given an acceleration of one meter per second square, even A also will move with an acceleration of one meter per second square. And let's say this mass is 2 kg and this mass is 4 kg, right? So if, how is this one meter acceleration? So basically I have applied a force is equal to six Newton here. If I apply a force of six Newton on the B, the whole system will get an acceleration of one meter per second square and A also get it. Now let me mark what are the forces. If I'm taking them together as a system, then friction force is internal force. Which direction the friction will act? So on A, friction force will act in the forward direction. On B, friction force will act in the backward direction. And the value of friction force will be equal to 2 Newton. This is 2 Newton force is acting. And in this case, you notice both have same acceleration. If I look at the figure sometime later, by the time these blocks are moved here, again, since it's undergoing translation, rather than looking two blocks, I will just focus on the two points here. So this point would has moved here, A point has moved here. And since there's no sleeping, B point also has moved here. So what is work done if it has undergone some displacement? Let's see, it has moved in for a period of T is equal to two seconds. In two seconds, acceleration is one meter per second square. So displacement is one by 24, it is two meters. So what is work done by friction on A? 2 into 2, 4. What is work done by friction on B? Minus 4. So what is the net work done by friction force here? If I take them as a system, it is called internal forces. Net work done by friction is 0. So here in this case, net work done by friction is equal to 0. 
or same statement if i read what is the work done by internal forces both are meaning the same thing because if i take them as a system work done by internal forces is equal to zero so you all have to look at what is the work done so i i can ignore if i when i calculate what is the change in kinetic energy i don't have to calculate work done by friction so friction is net is zero so at all work is being done work is done by only by external forces is this okay kartike yes sir okay now we we'll take a different case so this is something when there is no relative displacement let me change the numbers i'll keep this as 2 kg only and this is 4 kg and mu is equal to q point and now we apply a force of uh, see basically 18 newton if i apply a force of 18 newton i can if i just have a recap of uh, laws of motion acceleration of the system if i take them together as a system uh, this is 18 by 6 it will be 3 meter per second square then i check but top block can have acceleration only mu g it can have only 2 so basically it will lead to slipping so if i apply for 16 new 18 newton slipping will take place if slipping is taking place on the top block uh, friction will act in the forward direction which will be equal to 20 into 0.2 20 to 52 is 4 newton and lower block also equal in opposite 4 newton force is acting now let's say this is at t is equal to 0 i applied this force how would the figure and here also i represent block a also by a point and block b also by These are two points. How would it figure look like at t equal to one second? And t equal to one second, uh, uh, this one has an acceleration of two meter per second square, and lower block has an acceleration of this is two meter. Here net force acting is fourteen, fourteen by four, three point five meter per second square. Is it not? This is 18 newton. If I take this as a system here, 18 forward direction, four backward direction. 14 newton is the net force. So 14 by 4 is the is the acceleration. This is acceleration. So in one second, let's take t is equal to two second here. In two second, the top block would have moved by a distance equal to four meter. So from here, this will have a displacement of four meter. Whereas B B had acceleration of 3.5, hence it will have a displacement of 7 meter. So this block actually, I assume this is a long plank or something. So top block may be like like this, and bottom block at this point would have moved to distance of 7.5 meter. Now calculate less work done by the friction force. The for friction force on the top block is 4 newton into 4. That's the work done. It is done by 16 joules. But lower block, what is the work done? Work done is minus four into seven point five is equal to minus thirty newton. What is work done? Work done is minus fourteen. Sorry, minus thirty. What is what is chance? So here, work done is not zero. Why is not zero? We understand forces are equal opposite, but displacements are not equal. So unequal displacement leads to net work done by internal forces. This is I have taken example of conservative. Let me take a case of a. a, a The previous one was non-conservative. Let's take example of conservative, which is something like gravitational force. If we have two masses, and there are few couple of important points, let's understand here. So, okay, in this case also, uh, what would happen here if they are moving, moving under mutual force of attraction? Of course, the direction of displacement itself is opposite. So there is relative displacement work done by internal forces. If I take them system. So first of all, there is a gravitational force of attraction acting, and gravitational force of attraction which is acting is let me call at the distances F L in this direction, and this is F L, where F L is equal to what? F L is equal to G into 4 m into m divided by L square, and they are in the opposite direction. Now let's understand here three cases. What are three cases possible? One, if they relative if there is a relative displacement if there is a relative displacement of dl so there is a relative displacement of dl it means the distance reduces by distance dl i can take three cases what are three cases it can happen 
relative displacement what is the work done by internal forces i am calculating all cases work done by internal force first place when 4m is fixed when 4m is fixed only which one is moving only this block is in motion if this block moves which direction it will move it will move in this direction due to mutual force of attraction how much distance dl the so work done will be equal to fl into dl and work done will be positive when 4m is kept fixed second thing what you can do so work done is positive because of relative displacement let me take second case when m is fixed and again there is a relative displacement of dl in this case which will move this will move towards in this direction so the relative displacement is such it reduces the distance here also the fact force and displacement are in the same direction again the work done is equal to fl into d i'll take the third case when both are free to move from initial position of rest both are free to move when both are free to move they will not have relative displacement is dl but the force being same this will have lower acceleration this will have higher acceleration we can understand so this will move lesser distance this will have one fourth acceleration so compared to the same time what a displacement this has this has one fourth displacement we can also do from center of mass <coughs> which comes next so whenever there is a displacement dl some displacement here some displacement here but this will be four times of this displacement if some of the displacement is dl uh, this being one fourth this will be dl by 5 one fifth of the total and this will be 4 dl by 5 what is the work done by internal force on the first block work done by the force internal force on the first block is force of attraction at that distance into dl by 5 and what is work done on the second block again both are displacement of force both are in the same direction 4 dl by 5 which is equal to fl into dl and this is the important point what we use in case of potential energy when it was a conservative it it only depends on work done depends only on the relative displacement it does not depend whether this block moves this block moves or both of them move i hope this point is understood by all of you that uh, all three cases if one is fixed other is moving this is fixed other is moving it remains same so when we talk of previous case also there was net work done by friction but there is no special term associated with net work done here also in all three cases work is done by internal forces but this for internal force is conservative since this force is conservative whenever work is done what is causing work to be done work is done only when there is a relative displacement or when there is a change in relative position when the relative position changes had both of them moved by equal distance on the same side work done have been zero when the relative position changes then only work is done and since the work done is conserved by conservative force it leads to change in potential energy so change in potential energy is associated is when we talk of potential energy gravitational potential energy is there has to be two objects together and whenever relative position changes there is a change in potential energy which is equal to negative of work done so in this case what was the change in potential energy if it undergoes a displacement of dl it is minus fl into dl in all three cases thus the change in potential energy and fl is equal to nothing but minus g into 4m into m by l square into d okay so that's change in potential so finally i just one more point i want to come to when we talk about the potential energy see we deal with such cases many times we routinely mark if a surface is like this if mass m is here and from here i raise this mass to by height h we say that this potential energy increases delta p e is equal to uh, mg h but why do we write here actually if you look at strictly this interpretation is incomplete let's understand what is the complete interpretation complete it is not so relevant so sometime we use this is the this potential energy is because of two objects 
similar to that. What are the two objects here? Two object is um, earth here and this mass in here. So what is changing here? So potential energy of this mass changes because of internal forces. Internal force between this mass and the earth mass when the relative position changes. So since when the change in relative position is so small, during this small displacement compared to this total distance, we can assume the force to be constant and that's how we calculate potential energy. So when we talk of potential energy of a mass, gravitational potential energy, we are including that mass and earth as a system. But earth remains at rest, so even if we don't keep that in mind, it doesn't affect our earth. But that's a better way of understanding of what is gravitational change in gravitational potential energy of mass for a small displacement. What is small displacement? As long as it's something of the order of even 1% of radius of Earth. Even then it's small. What is 1%? You know 6,400 kilometers in radius. So even for a kilometer and two kilometer also this H is small. So we can take that approximation. Okay, so both of you. I hope this point is clear. Uh, internal forces, understanding of internal forces depend on choice. And whenever there's a relative displacement, there's a work done by internal forces. If it is friction, non-conservative force, so there's no special term, we can separately calculate. And typically what will happen in case of friction, the net work done will be negative. Okay. And then it, it could be conservative. In case of conservative, when work is done by internal forces, that leads to change in internal, change in potential energy if we take both the objects together as a system. Okay, so that's part. Now let's come to some more questions uh, I had in the sheet here. Uh, this is a question here, and you can this question you can imagine. Right? You can something you can see if, if you are traveling in a bus, and if you are traveling bus, so just assume that you do something like this. You can do something like this if there's a bus here, and you can understand nature of motion of bus. But if you suspend a pendulum here, if the road is really smooth and bus is cruising with a constant velocity, it is going with a constant velocity. You can see the pendulum be vertical. So vertical pendulum indicates the absence of acceleration. So that's a special property of acceleration. We can find out acceleration by conducting an experiment inside a closed bus. But can we find out velocity using this one? You cannot. So let's look at this here. And if bus is standing, suddenly you apply a brake. If brake suddenly brake comes to stop, we notice we just something suddenly you find this, what will happen? This will swing. It will start oscillating. As soon as the bus being a rigid body, if this part particle comes to stop, this particle also will come to stop, this particle will come to stop, this particle will come to stop. Because of forces acting within this, this rigid body, the force will get transmitted. It's like a rod. It's a rigid body. will come to stop. But what about this? Why is it not able to come to stop all of a sudden? Then let's try and understand it. So this is the case here. So here, a bob is suspended from crane. And length is 5 meter. You can imagine. You can see this crane moving on the road also. And moving with speed V0, it's stopped by a bumper and it comes to instantaneous rate. And what we find, bow on the cable swings to a maximum angle of 60 degrees. So based on this angle, if you know the length, angle to it swings, then suppose there's a dial here, we can read what is the maximum angle it has swung. And if you know the length, we could have calculated what was the speed of the crane before it came to stop. How do we do that? That's our part one. We have drawn two stages. See, when this support comes to stop, this point has come to stop. Whereas this is not able to stop because soon after crane coming to rest, it is equivalent to point of suspension being at rest. Suddenly, point from this has come to rest. This velocity will become zero. But this has not been zero, but it needs certain force to act in the direction of opposite motion. Then only it will come to a state of rest, where which is not there. It is hanging by string. So it is equivalent to this bob having a velocity v0. So as soon, soon after it comes to stop, it is equivalent to a bob suspended from a support which is at rest, bob having velocity v0. And we know when the velocity v0, because of inertia, it will try to move in the same direction. But because of the string, it will move in the arc of a circle. It will reach a final point, maximum angle. And this point, it will again to be at momentary rest. It will be a state of momentary rest. This angle is 60. So uh, can we find out velocity? Yeah, that's not true. Natural try to put in a straight path to bring it exert tension so as to make it move in a circular path. So as if this, if I take this object as a system, 
I am taking this object and actually Earth has a system. We don't write Earth, but Earth has a part of the system. So we are taking this mass and Earth as a system. Uh, two forces are doing work on the ball, gravity, and other forces present its tension. But tension in the string is not doing any work because it's always perpendicular to direction of motion. So only gravity is doing work. Hence, we can apply conservation of mechanical energy. So maximum, this is my final state and this is my initial state. Since gravitational potential is in, involved, I take this as a reference level. Above this, potential energy increases. Below this, potential energy decreases. And this length is L. If this length is L, angle is 60 degree. You can easily calculate this will be equal to L by 2. And hence, this height also will be equal to L by 2. Let's calculate total energy here. Initial energy is 1 by 2 mv0 square, no potential energy. Here, mg into delta h, delta h is equal to L by 2. And we simply substitute this value. We find v0 is equal to 7 meter per second square. Thus, another important point I want to bring it to your notice, see that all of you notice. So if this velocity was V0, it goes to a maximum height of what? It reaches a maximum height of 2.5 meter. If rather than suspending from the string here or cable here, if this velocity V0 is given in the upward direction also, still it will reach the same maximum height. Though the time taken may not be same, but this maximum height reached is same here as it is here. Both are identical. It has a different path, but here also it has a vertical displacement of L by 2. And this kinetic energy got converted to potential energy. So if this velocity was given vertical direction, still maximum height reached would have been same as the height reached by the ball. This is a fairly simple calculation you can easily do. And what will be H will be what H will be equal to or V0 will be equal to root 2 gh. Okay, that's root 2 gl by 2 and simple. Next question is something like this. And this is also a little very interesting question and little tricky and be attentive here. Vertical force. See the, this, uh, let's see, uh, vertical string of force constant 20 newton per meter. This vertical string with a hanging mass of 10 kg. Hanging mass means mass is hanging. It means the string is already elongated. It has a natural length of L0. It has already been elongated by distance equal to mg by k. If it is in the state of rest. And then uh, now an external force is applied to the mass so that spring is stressed by additional 2 meter. So already there was some extension. There is a further extension of 2 meter. And in that case, what is the work done by this force F, which is applied? So that's what we need to calculate. And let's go about solving this question. So this was the initial state. Let's try and understand here. When constant force is applied here, uh, this is something you come to know later. Yes, of course, uh, uh, we have done SHM already. You will understand here. It will undergo SHM oscillation. It will go back and forth. So additional extension here implies maximum extension. So though it is not clear, so such kind of assumption you need to make here, it will have SHM. So there cannot be, it can only imply maximum extension when mass is at momentary rest. So we need to find what is the further downward displacement you have till it comes to point of momentary rest. That will be my final state. Final state is like this. So here also velocity is zero at rest. And here also velocity is zero. And both cases in during this period, what are the forces which are acting? Which forces are doing what? Three forces are doing what? Which force? This external force is doing what? The spring force is doing what? And gravity is doing what? So, of course, external force is non-conservative. So, it is not a conservation of energy equation. It's a work done by non-conservative force equal to change in potential energy plus change in kinetic energy type of motion. Okay. So, there is a change in the potential energy of the spring as well as due to gravitation. Both are there. So, let's add in the initial extension of the spring is 1 meter. And how do we calculate? This will be four forces if you are right with this 100 by 100. So, it was initially it was extended by 1 meter. So this position already it was extended from L0 by 1 meter. It will have further extension of 2 meter. So total elongation of the spring. Here elongation of the spring was 1 meter. Here the elongation of the string is the string is 3 meter. Additional 2 meter, that's what that's what it means. Because why we need this extension of the spring? Because ex potential energy of the spring depends on its extension or contraction, its displacement from the main position. So both the these are required. 
now let's calculate so initial extent so what is initial potential energy 1 by 2 kx square so 1 by 2 kx square it comes into 50 joules okay so we calculate initial potential energy and calculate final potential energy let's write this equation uh, so work done by non kinetic force will be equal to change in kinetic energy change in potential energy I mean, that's what it means so this is i'm writing final kinetic energy zero final potential energy of the spring 1 by 2 into k into this extension 3 square gravitation since i have taken the gravitational reference here is zero this term is zero minus initial kinetic energy it was zero only initial energy stored in the spring was 50 and initial gravitational potential energy is equal to this height from here what is this height compared to this height 2 meter mg into h this is 2 meter so from if we substitute as a form, it comes to 200 joules. That's the work done by external force. So this simple step by step you follow, you can all, it's a simple one, you can learn. And what kind of motion will have? It will have a such a motion. And what will be amplitude of a such a motion here? Amplitude of a such a motion will be equal to one meter. Because this is also zero velocity and this also zero velocity. It means that both are amplitude positions. This is distance from zero position to zero position is twice the amplitude. So this distance is equal to 2a. And uh, which is the mean position? In between the mean position will come. If I have to find what is the force here, what is the additional force required? Can we calculate the magnitude of force? Yes, we can calculate it. Because the, the, earlier this was the mean position with the application of force f, this has become mean position. So mean position extension of the spring is 2 meter. So main position expansion of K into 2 meter has to be equal to F plus mg. That's the main position. So 100 into 2 is equal to F plus mg is equal to 100. So F has to be equal to 100 newton. And which I also could have figured out work done is 200. Displacement is 2 meter. So this force is equal to 100. So because the force is 100 meter, the main position has shifted where the net force is zero. This also is past mains question. And you know, well, it's actually it's a very simple question. The wordings and all are given like this. Uh, point particle of mass m moves along uniformly rough track. Uniformly rough track is mu c. From t, it goes to q, and from q, it goes to r. It slides down and goes like this. Coefficient of friction between particle and the rough surface is equal to mu. So here also is the mu. Here also, all surface coefficient friction is released from rest at point P and comes to rest at R. So here also at rest, here also at rest. This point also is at rest. It means there's no change in kinetic energy. The energy lost by the ball over part P, Q, and Q are on the track. So there's some friction, but loss of energy because of work done by friction. We understand loss of energy is due to friction. And from here also due to work done by friction. What is given here, loss by the ball over part P, Q, and Q of the track are equal to each other. So whatever friction has done work between P and Q, negative work done, Q are also it has done equal work. And that's what is given here. And there's no loss of energy because sudden change in direction. Actually here also, uh, this kind of collision here. But we say the loss of energy is zero. We need to find the value of coefficient of friction and the distance x. This distance x, it will travel. What is given here, the height of point P from the ground is 2 meter. So one way to understand here, see this is very easy to understand here. See this is something if I look at point P and R. When I was rest to rest, work done by all forces have to be equal to zero. That's what it is. And which means work done by gravity plus work done by friction from P to Q plus work done by friction from Q to R. All put together is equal to zero. But these two are equal. These two are equal and negative. So basically what we have concluded from here, work done by friction of P to Q and Q to R, each one is equal to half the work done by gravity. And work done by gravity is equal to, so each part here, work done by friction, and here will be half of the work done by gravity. Work done by gravity is mg into two meter. Okay, so that's work done by gravity. So uh, each part work done by friction from P to Q is mg, from Q to R also is mg. Well, that is very simple to solve. Energy loss from P to Q is half of mg delta H, which is mg. 
So what is work done by friction from P to Q is very easy to calculate. P Q to what is the work done by friction? The friction will act in this direction, kinetic friction, mu mg cos theta, and the length P Q will be equal to if uh, this angle is 30, and if you call as a theta, it will be h by sine theta. So that would be the work. Mu mg cos theta h by sine theta. We substitute the values of theta, which is 30 degrees. You can easily calculate and we get our answer. Actually, mu comes something like 2 divided by root 3, which is roughly 0.3. We can add it. Yes, Vinesh? So when they say equal energy is lost over the parts PQ and QR, the energy lost over PQ should also include the potential energy lost, right, sir? No, you see, in when you say equal energy of what? What is the total loss of energy? When we are interpreting, what is the total loss of energy? See, what is loss of energy here? See, how else you can interpret this question? Can you think of any other way? Sir, like even potential energy is lost, right, sir? On moving from P to Q. Okay, in that case, what is the loss of energy between Q and R? Uh, that's so only due take, to the friction. If I take potential energy, also loss. But the basically, I think both of them are loss. Can they ever equate to this term now? If we do that, see when yes. no energy lost. When you see, okay, so what you are saying, potential energy. When we talk of potential energy, we don't say okay. But you are thinking that also can be taken as a loss. Actually, that's not implied, and I'm just thinking with how are you interpreting it that way, or how other students can interpret in that fashion. See, if you interpret that also half the energy lost, I would equate to half of what? Whether this is an equal to each other. So you are saying I will calculate here and here energy loss is mgh plus mu mg cos theta into h by sine theta. Thus energy loss between P and Q. And then between Q and R, it is equal to mu mgx. Is that what you're saying? The energy loss? Yes, sir. Huh? And uh, you are equating these two, those two. Okay, so that is something you are saying loss of energy, even loss of potential energy also should be included. See, typically, whenever friction also is involved, so uh, uh, I don't think this you should uh, ever interpret like this. We can say that one, yes, the loss of potential energy gets converted into some other form of energy. So basically this question, I think most people who had, I, you are the first one who come across this interpretation. Maybe some other people also may have same interpretation. This is assumed is straight away thing, the energy lost here, it has come zero to zero. So from here to here as it moves, it is talking about total, what, what is the loss of energy from P to R? See here also people can say net, this net is zero. Loss is, the energy which is lost is friction alone is taken as a loss and loss of friction is coming at the expense of gravitational potential. That was, I think, implied interpretation and that's how the question was solved. So I was just thinking whether well, what is wrong with this you're thinking? Deep uh, picture, no energy is lost in particle. Okay. Yeah, one can say, but I would, I would, if you make that interpretation, I, there's no scientific principle which says your interpretation is entirely wrong. I won't say it is entirely wrong, though it doesn't seem too logical assumption. Why not logical? I would think some other way of how to explain that part, but I think it's not logical here, but not in this particular case, right? Okay. Coming to, okay, so I think this energy, this small power part is left. I will deal with the power tomorrow. I will stop here. And uh, there's some small part related to power. And I will do power for some time. And then I'll continue with uh, next topic, which is uh, circular motion in horizontal plane. So 